for Black History Month, I, I wanted one of our, our loved ones to share uh, a bit of their gift with us on this morning. And uh, he was so gracious and excited, and he was like, Pastor Mike, I've been waiting for you to ask me to do this. Amen. He does speaking and spoken word all over the world. He's a world-renowned, somebody say amen, amen. I'm getting you ready. I'm pumping them up. Somebody say amen. No, no. He, he is a great brother here at The Way. He is a great spoken word artist. He has his own TED Talk, something some of us ain't even done yet. Amen. Don't you got a TED Talk? Am I, am I lying, Craig? You ain't got the lie to kick it, right? Amen. So put your hands together for Brother Jermaine Hughes coming to give us a Black History Month special focus on with his spoken word gifts. Clap it up for him, everybody. A bit of truth, uh, <laughs> only a bit. Uh, I, as, as much as I've performed and I've spoken, I still get extra nervous. Uh, so I wasn't like super juiced, you know, that he was like, you know, like, oh my gosh, I've been waiting for this opportunity. That is not true. Um, I am definitely afraid. Um, and, uh, but I've, I'm learning something and have been learning something about fear that you'll fear it you'll feel it, and you can still proceed. Um, it doesn't go away, per se, but you can still accomplish what you were trying to accomplish. So I'll do this poem. I always, um, I say for the last number of months, I've began to do some more freestyling versus poems that I've written um, in an effort to be more authentic and more present to like what's happening right now. Um, and so I'm gonna do that right now. Um, All right. Um, I'm talking with Jesus. I'm at a restaurant with my girlfriend, and we're having a hard time. We just spoke with our pastor about the relationship and about something that I did that wasn't good, and I feel guilty. Um, I feel ashamed. However, somehow she still wants to love me, still wants to tell me sweet things, tell me how much I mean to her, and that she has somehow found it in her heart to forgive me. And as if she has wronged me, I am having none of it. Cannot see how, that, how she can forgive me in this moment. After I've done what I've done, I mean, really. She sought someone on, on Bumble, sought someone to connect with and found me and I feel guilty as if there was, should be someone else in my place. She asked me to look her in the eye. I reply, I can't. At that particular moment, the reason why I can't look her in the eye is two things. One, if I look her in the eye, I recognize that I have done her wrong. Two. By looking her in the eye, I recognize that I am actually doing wrong again right now by avoiding her, ignoring her, acting like she isn't there in an attempt to, uh, to beat myself up in this moment, in an attempt to feel better. Perhaps later I am distancing myself and I am also causing pain. I need help. Jesus is like, I forgive you. I tell him likewise. What is it that you are actually forgiving me for? Could you possibly be serious? Do you know how much of a mistake I am? Could you possibly love me past all of my flaws? Jesus, are you really here or are you just saying that? More importantly, why would you love someone like me? I mean, really, all the mistakes that I'm about to make that I have yet to make, are you still going to be here? Would you rather have someone perfect in your life, someone perfect as a saint, someone that can worship you without mistake and flaws and blemishes? Would you really want this for you? I give you space as a gift, Jesus. I'm trying to save you. I'm trying not to hurt you anymore, he says, are you serious? She says, 
are you serious? I say, what is the problem? They both say, will you please stop beating yourself up? I tell them, all I know is pain. All I know is how to hit myself over the head in the replace of batons and replace of the sirens wrapping around me each day. I hear them. I hear this place in this country. How do you expect me to love myself? How do you expect me to forgive you, hear you, when you say that you love me in a place in which people have never really embraced me, in a place in which people have never really taken me serious, taken me to a place to let me know that I belong here, and you're asking me to belong to you? Are you serious? Can you possibly love me? Can I possibly love you and give back to you what you are giving me? You say you died for me. How can I possibly live for you in this state I'm in, in this place I'm in? Dear Jesus, baby, I, I want to say sorry, but I know it's not enough. Someone said you have to love yourself in order for someone else, in order for you to love someone else. And I reply, I think if I'm not mistaken, in order for me to love someone else, I have to love myself. But in order for them to know and receive the love, or in order for them to give the love to me that I want to give back to them, I have to love myself first. I have to let them know that it actually means something when you say you love me, that it actually means something when you say you forgive me, that it actually means something when you're present, that I'm not distancing myself from you. I am here. I am here. I have not forgotten what you have said to me. Jesus, I know that you're speaking to me. I know that you're telling me something that I need to understand about myself and about the prayers that I say to you, that I'm worshiping you, but I... If I don't love myself, then what does it mean? Thank you for this opportunity to see myself more clearly. Despite the country, despite the mistakes I make, you're still here. And somehow, and I'll figure out how, you love me and I am worth everything you gave me. Thank you. Thank you.